are we today? Are you on mute? No. Shall we leave the meeting and come back on? Can't hear you. What's that red thing up the top there? I'll leave meeting and then I'll come back in. What's that red thing up the top? It says it's recording. Uh, Otira, kia ora tātou. Um, to those that are tuning in to listen to our kōrero today, uh, mai haramai. welcome uh, one and all. Um, unfortunately today we won't have uh, Leone with us, however um, we do have Linda with us today um, to facilitate our kōrero. Um, I tēnei wā kā hoki ngā, ngā mahara kā hoki ngā mihi, ki te whānau a pāpā tīkani mai kore puru i tēnei wā. O tira, moi mai rā i te e te rangatira i roto i ngā ringa o te ariki i tēnei wā. Ka hoki ngā mihi ki te whānau pani. Uh, I runga i tērā, me whakatūwhera hoki tātou i tā tātou nei kōrero i tēnei rā, uh, mai ke i tētahi karaki a tawhito. Arā, kwa mutua ki ngā whakamāra mai i tēnei wā. Mai e, te tipua mai e, te tawhito mai e, te kāhui o ngā riki. Mai e, tā whiti ati ki ngā atua. O i kata ki nga te mauri, ko te mauri i āhua noa mai. Ki runga ki wēnei taura, ki runga ki wēnei tauira, ki a tau te mauri, ki runga ki wēnei tamahe tsukuna no te whai oro oro tāne te wai ora. Tēnei te matatau tāe. Whakatū tāru ki rangi, uhi, wero, au mai te mauri o haumi e, hui e, tāi ki e. Arā, kia ora tātou. Um, just to quickly recap, um, in our first session, we uh, had uh, Matua he Ngangaroa speak about the foundations of kaupapa Māori theory. Um, in our second session, we had uh, Faya Linda being about decolonizing methodologies and um, today because Leonie's not with us um, we have Faya Linda who's going to facilitate our session today so kia ora tātou, kia ora kōrua. Tēnā koutou katoa, tēnā tātou, um, welcome back and I'm putting constraints on Graham so that we can have a discussion <laughs> about the kind of new formations of colonization. And this is an idea that, that he has written about um, for years, and in particular um, in, in terms of the neoliberal project. And so what, what I want to start with is, um, Graham, maybe if you could talk about the the sort of foundational work you've done around new formations because I think one of the challenges is that a lot of the work that you've done you haven't actually published so you've done it in lots of talks so I think it's really good to kind of recap it here's another talk this very important message about how colonization um, you know continues uh, but in, in new forms so if you could sort of summarize that and then we will um, and then you stop, and then I'll ask another question. Okay? No. <laughs> <laughs> I will stand on your foot because I'm in the same yeah. room as you. Yeah. Tuatahi, kei te tautoko ngā kupu poroporo aki ki te matua huirangi i tēnei wā. Nō reira, tēnā koe uetini mō o... Mō o kupu hei hua ki nga tō tātou nei. Hui, mō te rā. So, just thank you very much, Linda. Um, uh, pleased to uh, get back after after being booted off the <laughs> platform last time. Uh, rudely interrupted, I might add. But, uh, uh, 
let me begin by just uh, summarising, uh, I think, the key points of where I left off, uh, and I'll lead into the new formations of colonisation concept. Um, and uh, so perhaps I should just prior to that, just say, given the, uh, the view that uh, I don't publish and write this stuff up, I, I, I would like to explain that because I've deliberately not written up a heck of a lot of the Kopop of Māori um, uh, uh, theorising and, and so on. I, I did put, put um, much of it in my thesis, but the evolution over time has been quite dramatic and quite profound. But I haven't um, uh, wanted to commit too much of that to writing because uh, I've found that when it's written down, becomes formulaic. People just take the ideas without the key concept and the whole um, um, element is this idea of praxis. It's actually doing it. It's the practical element, the blisters on the hands, which I've continually talked about. So um, my view is that people need to come at this, not just in terms of uh, an academic writing and uh, and engagement, but also in the practice of doing it, learn from the uh, uh, the, the, the the engagement. So uh, that's that explanation. Um, okay. uh, the the summary of uh, where I was. Mind uh, you, that's not an excuse we'd give our PhD students for not writing things down. Yeah, but I also do the talk of the quarter or so. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Right, get on with the co-papa, thank you. So uh, just to summarise where I went to last time is uh, around um, the key points that I was making about co-papa Māori research is that Māori language, knowledge, culture, mātauranga is at the centre of our research consideration. That's the focus. Uh, no compromise. Kopapa Māori research takes for granted the validity and legitimacy of being, acting, and participating as Māori. Um, Kaupapa Māori research is very intentional, intentional in, its, um, uh, in the purpose of being transforming, uh, that we can't keep doing the same old things that haven't been working, that uh, if we're getting involved in research, it needs to lead somewhere that is positive, proactive, and is going to in the end, and make a difference. Um, I, I think that associated with that intentionality of, of transforming is that we need a logic of transforming. Can't just sort of say, we're going to make a change, and then it magically happens. I think we need to sort of unpack that concept and, and build and understand exactly how we get transforming and uh, outcomes and uh, what they should mean and so on. Um, I also argue that uh, 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 kōpapa Māori researchers necessarily need to have a critical outlook. That we can't, um, that, uh, that these two things uh, uh, go, go together, that um, if you don't have a critical outlook, you can't understand what accurately what is going wrong. And unless you understand accurately what is going wrong and how it's going wrong, we can't come up with accurate answers to fix it. That's the logic of that. So uh, we, we need to uh, have a critical outlook and the critical outlook uh, um, gives us a set of tools to be able to unpick and analyse uh, some of the tensions that are, that are that are causing the, the issues and the problems. And um, in, my, in my work and in, in, in my thesis, I leaned heavily on critical theory to enable this. And, um, and I think that they do provide some really uh, seriously um, relevant tools for us to, to uh, do that part. And then um, I think that the other point I was making that we need to uh, continually appreciate that we do live in a colonised society, uh, that and that colonisation um, is reproduced by uh, uh, 
the colonial dominance that's reproduced in the structures and processes of society. Mm. And, um, and so part of our critical uh, analyses and tools uh, should, should enable us to understand how that's operating and how we might uh, uh, overcome some of that stuff. So um, that, that there's a need to understand that uh, uh, the, the forces that we're dealing with are both structural and culturalist, that some of them are uh, embedded in the bigger structures of society. It's not all about people doing it to us and people's behaviours, but it's also embedded in the big structures of uh, the economy, policy, uh, hegemony, and, and, and various other, other names that we can uh, 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 give to these forces that sit over the top of us. Um, I also suggested that when we're looking at these forces, we need to understand that dominant power is not a singular entity that's coming at us, but it's, it's, it's split up. It's coming in very uh, different forms and in multiple shapes, multiple uh, um, places, and sometimes simultaneously. So our strategies to resist need to be the same. We need to be engaged in multiple sites and multiple strategies in, in, uh, in, in multiple ways. So, uh, and, and I, I use this, uh, I use the analogy of the Dutch boy on the dam trying to hold back the water, but I also uh, draw uh, a, an alignment here with the work of, of our graduate students, of all of you out there, that we need many uh, arguments, we need many pieces of research, we need many different shapes and sizes that are coming at, at the issues uh, and attacking these issues and responding to them, resisting them in, uh, across all of these different sites. So um, uh, that, that to me is a really important thing that we need to understand these issues of, uh, of power and uh, in particular un unequal power relations that uh, continue to be manipulated by dominant forces in our communities and our society. Um, all right, and so I think the last point to get to the topic of today was that colonization, uh, the, uh, I did suggest that colonization has not gone away, that rather it has simply changed shape. It is coming at us in new forms, new formations, and, um, and for uh, many of us uh, um, that we've understood that the neoliberal economic context in which we're trying to survive today uh, carries many of these new formations. So many of these formations are, in, are uh, economic in, in the way in which they're, they're being developed. So let me uh, just uh, unpack some of this stuff. So one of the key concepts of neoliberalism is the idea of the possessive individual. So it's a capitalistic concept and basically it's a belief that every individual is selfish yeah. every individual wants to accumulate wealth property and and so on for themselves yeah. it's all about me and um and so that that uh, idea is that a cornerstone of um of uh, uh neoliberal thought that uh, we've set up all of these structures in society that are reinforced by individual freedoms, individual rights. It's all about the individual. And of course, the uh, colonizing element here, or the, 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 the dissonance, if you like, with uh, how Māori think is that we tend to think collectively, that, we're, that we are made up of uh, collectives, that we are tribal, people, that we uh, belong to a whānau, uh, that we have uh, different responsibilities that are cultural that call us to be uh, collaborative and collective in the way in which we work in our, um, in our uh, notions of reciprocity and our gathering of koha and the manaakitanga, all of that concept you can see, this, uh, this idea of collectivity 
um, at the core of it. So immediately you get a, a, a tension between the individualism that's uh, reified in the neoliberal context and the collectivity that's in our own uh, um, cultural uh, domain. So um, uh, there is a, a great deal of emphasis put on individual rights and individual freedoms. So a lot of this stuff, uh, you know, this contestation has come to fruition in treaty settlement processes where there's been uh, significant, you know, a lot of our, of our uh, claims are based on collectivity. But of course, uh, uh, there are some who uh, see this as an individual right and individual freedom. And so uh, there's internally between Māori, there's uh, often a, a disconnection, but also, you know, when we look historically about the, uh, the way in which uh, land title was individualized and so on against collective ownership and those sorts of things. So you can see all the way along the line that individual rights mm -hmm. and individualism have been problematic for, for people who are thinking uh, more collectively. Now, one of the other points of tension, I think, in the uh, neoliberal context is the way in which uh, the notion of equity has been captured and, uh, and the way in which it's been, uh, I believe, manipulated by uh, dominant interests uh, over the top of Māori. Um, so in the in Treasury speak, Treasury uh, has uh, usually seen, you know, and the, and the literature tells us this as well, that equity is often sort of partitioned up into sort of three major shapes. Uh, the first shape they call uh, is sort of horizontal equity, where uh, equity is, goes this way across the whole of society. And it's often uh, given the term level playing field equity, where we treat every citizen exactly the same. And uh, of course, if the if the ship is already imbalanced, right, and uh, two sides of the ship uh, 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 obviously not equal, but if we wanted to balance the ship, and we applied. Uh, the rule of uh, horizontal equity where we put another 10 tons on this side and 10 tons on this side of the ship, the ship stays the same. It won't, it won't change. So horizontal equity, if we understand that idea now, is not going to deal with the inequities that actually reside in Māori communities and Māori society if we keep thinking to every citizen, the inequalities that are there will remain. Mm. So the other form of equity which Treasury uh, is often talked about is what they call vertical equity. So vertical equity means that individual groups are highlighted and their, and their, um, uh, and their needs are dealt with as a group. So we've seen this, so Māori uh, housing is given funding for Māori housing because it is seen as uh, not uh, equitable to the general population or uh, women engineers are not, um, there's not enough women engineers, so we're going to do things to create equity in terms of the outcomes for women engineers. So we're dealing with groups, these vertical groups in society, but the problematic with that is that um, not all Māori, you know, are the same. So what, what's been unpicked is that uh, if you're dealing with Māori uh, housing and you make grants just blanket for all Māori, well, there's some Māori who are rich and got three houses and some Māori who've got no houses. And so you have to differentiate the application of the equity that's going to that vertical group. So that brings us to the third form of equity that uh, is probably more apparent today which is called distributive equity where we're targeting within those vertical columns particular uh, uh, groups within the group that might need support uh, the problematic in the neoliberal context is that there's been a manipulation of these different applications from time to time and the most common one that's been used is the level playing field 
uh, application of equity, the definition. And the reason being is because dominant society keeps saying, what about us? That group is always getting support. What about, you know, uh, the mainstream and, and so on? So in the end, if you apply uh, horizontal equity, we end up doing nothing in terms of changing changing uh, econ systems. Yeah, structures and systems. So um, democracy is a problematic term in the new neoliberal formation. And, um, you know, one person, one vote is... Um, can be can be manipulated. So, you know, I think that we have, um, you know, uh, uh, again, it's almost a hegemony where people just uh, blindly uh, uh, believe in democracy as delivering all of our rights and uh, and so on. But actually, if you're the one person, one Maori sitting at the table of twelve, and um, and you know the vote is on. Uh, whether Māori language should be, you know, taught in uh, schools and so on, there's a good chance that we uh, are relying on other people's um, uh, good good support to to assist that going through. Not saying it's, there's not support out there, but I'm just saying that we don't have the same live access, if you like, to democracy as other people have, and I think that's a problematic in the media liberal. Well, it gets played out with in neoliberalism with the creation of an extremely wealthy class of people, like privilege upon privilege upon privilege. So, you know, it's much more exacerbated, don't you think? Yeah, no, well, it, it's, uh, um, you know, as we've seen, and I'll talk about this a little bit later on, and, uh, it's been, democracy has been taken to another level uh, in the what I call the Trumponomic uh, context. Yeah, well, it's descended to another level, perhaps, <laughs> rather than taken up to another <laughs> level. Um, okay, so you want to carry on with well, yeah, these they, points, they, or do you uh, want to get to the? Uh, uh, yeah, well, I'll, I'll just name some thing. other some other uh, elements that I think mm -hmm. are problematic for us in, in this uh, context. So I think. Um, devolution policy, which has been a significant uh, platform of the Labour Party, you know, we're devolving, you know, the myth, this is all hegemony, you know, where we believe that this is you know, really going to be liberating, where we devolve government power to communities so that communities can have more power. So boards of trustees of schools were ostensibly devolve power from the central government for schools to be now run by boards of trustees and we and we soon found out that that was a big myth mm. that actually uh school boards were actually held to charters which were you know almost 90 percent set from the center so they had, might be lucky if they had 10 percent of where parents really had control or influence over schools so uh, but it all showed also showed the differential in resources that communities could bring to bear yeah well that's that's uh, again you know part of that choice mm. theory was you know uh, choice theory was that you know if there's things going wrong in the community then the community made bad choices yeah. it wasn't government yeah. so what you got from the, in the devolution policy was the devolution of government responsibility onto communities but the communities weren't given the same level of resources and power yeah. to do what the government used to do. So it was a nice contract in the sense that government were able to watch things fall apart over here, stand over here and smell like a rose, and say, "Look at those poor communities. Look at those communities. They're messing it up. We gave them the choices, and they didn't." and they didn't really make it work. So I think just to summarise the points that you're making in this linear project is that these strategy, these like high level concepts like democracy, the individual and that, there, there's a number of things that go on with them. One is the, the way they're sold to the public, if you like, and to Māori as high moral, high level ideals. Of a, of a good society, but underneath it, I think what you're doing is unpacking 
the way in which these ideas are actually deeply implicated in um, oppression and uh, perpetuating inequities rather than empowering uh, communities. So, so there's this myth about what they can achieve and then there's this deep underlying structures in a sense. These are the sort of structures of ideas. Is that what you're saying? Yes, cup over there. Yeah, thank Good you. Listening. I'm glad I could <laughs> summarise that for you so that you can move on to um, the next section that, that we discussed earlier about... Um, All right. But I want you to talk about that. Yeah, so just one yes. thing I would add to what yeah. you've just said is that the language that I'm using is new formations of colonisation yeah. because to the extent that these things particularly impact on Māori and continue on the same things that we've been suffering over the years in terms of uh, political, social and economic marginalisation, they are new forms of colonisation. And so that's, that's, that's the point that we and track that back to, to the original statement that colonisation has not gone away. We've understood colonisation in its traditional forms, you know, the schools did it to us, the, the churches did it to us, and, and uh, the invaders' policies did it to us, and so on. And I think many people have mistakenly thought that because we've known about that now and talked about it for many years, that somehow we've got beyond that. Yeah, and that, and that, and that uh, yes, because we've understood it, it's gone away. But uh, the point I'm making is that we need to continually be vigilant. We need to understand how um, how the contemporary society is, is uh, you know, uh, implicated in using these uh, different shapes to continue on with that. So a couple of other just quick concepts I think that are important for us as I think academics. Uh, you know, so there's a couple of things that actually influence the academic domain. One is is the idea of accountability, and uh, so we've seen the rise of accountability yeah. in the new context. And accountability is uh, is often been uh, reinforced by the idea of evidence. You know, we evidence based. So a lot of us uh, who work in the academy are being held to account about the evidence. So the validity and legitimacy of Māori knowledge is often undermined by challenges around where is the evidence? What's the evidence for this? And um, Well, that was all part of the reforms as well as the reform of the public sector and this kind yeah. of idea of public yeah. accountability very much embedded in the wider yeah. neoliberal reform. So yeah. this idea that, you know, a dollar invested by government you know had to be accounted for so all the language yeah so um that uh reshaping uh, mm. i guess of all of this is uh, what's been termed as managerialism and so um the idea that you know everything can be uh, added up and uh, you know partitioned and framed and boxed in numbers and in other words, uh, very techno-rational sort of logic applied to the world. That yeah. the, it's all about techno-rationality. And that leads then into contracting, which is the major mechanism in which funds often flow outside yes. government. I'll, I'll have a word to Leonie about your contract. Or so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, right. just yeah. moving along then, moving all right. along. All right. I, so, want you, I want you to get to talking about the orange one. Yeah, all right. The, um, the Trumponomics, I think, is, uh, again, an important new development for us to, I think, engage with. So um, Trumponomics is actually a new phenomenon where we've had the neoliberal world and uh, we've been busy dealing with that, but Donald Trump has come along and totally deconstructed, if you like, neoliberalism and asserted his own shaping, reshaping of neoliberalism. 
and I think uh, you know obviously it's uh, uh, pretty dangerous because what he's done is you know we've always uh, had critiques of neoliberalism and the uh, worst case scenario was always identified down here and that uh, most of the world was traveling around the middle of neoliberalism so had a bit of a some liberal um, um, uh, breaks uh, on it so it didn't actually exploit the full full uh, uh, potential of it but um, I have to say that uh, what we're seeing in America is that uh, Donald Trump has really exploited uh, the this idea uh, really uh, to uh, to new I was going to say new heights but no, you said depths. new lows new depths. yeah I don't even know <laughs> if you should you know like memorialize his name by calling it Trumponomics because everyone will use that I think you should just call it Orange, orange nomics. Agent Orange. Agent Orange nomics. The orange one. Yeah. Something like that. But okay. All right. So I'm key interested element. Interested in hearing this. Yeah. So a key element of it is uh, reinvestment in the trickle down uh, theory. It, it is, or trickle up. It, 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 no trickle down. It's, it's a hegemony that he's mm. got going, um, and the uh, the idea that. Um, that uh, they're winners and losers, yeah. and that actually society shouldn't waste its time on losers. Yeah. That we need to um, invest in the winners. The winners will make the wealth, and uh, well, you know, potentially the myth is the hegemony is that the trickle down effect will look after the others if we look after the and make the wealthy absolutely. Um, uh, rich, I guess. So, um, and in his whole thinking is that the absolute uh, priority in society is to be the economy. Mm -hmm. So, whereas mm -hmm. in the neoliberal society, there's you know tensions between science and uh, there is clearly um, a hierarchy which puts the economy at the top of the hierarchy in terms of the things that are useful. So as a consequence, more recently we've seen, you know, it keeps raising the issue of getting back to the economy uh, at a time when we've got all these deaths going on with COVID-19 and so on. Um, but there's a real tension between what's been interesting to observe is the tension between science yes. as a driver of society yeah. and the economy. So. Yeah. Uh, science has been put down, it's been put in its place by Donald Trump. Well, I think that's kind of interesting because yeah. in a way the neoliberals try to kind of co-opt science into this new technology world that technology was going to provide solutions. But now we've got a um, you know, situation where the orange, the orange um, rejection of science, I mean, I we find ourselves yeah. in an interesting situation of ha having to defend science when yeah. we too have been arguing uh, sort of against the particular model of yeah. science and the way it's treated and Maori, but now we're having to defend the whole idea that knowledge, knowledge, informed knowledge really matters. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but it's been like sh shunted down. So things like, um, you know, facts yeah. and the truth yeah, or truths, yeah. have been challenged. Uh, they're no longer things that we can rely on. There's no such thing as truth, according to Trump. You know, he yeah. can unpack it. It's, uh, he uh, he uh, invents his own truth. Yeah. Um, that uh, he's accused the press of, um, you know, uh, falsifying the truth in terms of their, um, um, the, the, uh, the, Coverage. Yeah. So, um, the, the, so the, the level playing field equity is uh, unpacked. It's made up of winners and losers. And uh, what he said that uh, winners are important. It's created hierarchies in society with the most wealthy at the top 
we build the wealth of the society, it's going to help the others. Uh, democracy has um, been reshaped or under manipulated, yeah. And uh, so it's a power by any means necessary. And, uh, you know, the manipulation of political appointments and so on to um, not create, uh, you know, a democratic process, mm. but to actually follow the party line. Um, individualism um, uh, has been, you know, uh, again, reified has been important, but the uh, uh, attendant stuff that's gone on with it, which has been the attack on anything collective as being socialism, communism, and so on. So, and you can witness that in the attacks on the Bernie Sanders stuff uh, that's been unpacked by him. Well, um, they've always been masters of the rhetoric, I think, neoliberals. Yeah. They've been able to master public discourse and control it in quite powerful ways. Yeah, yeah and accountability has become um, more, more uh, surveillance in the way yeah. it's been, been uh, operated. Privatisation, um, you know, the full-blown uh, privatisation uh, where the... Um, Public public assets are to be owned by yeah. wealthy individuals. Yeah, um, all of that's coming to light. So uh, again, it's while I think the world more generally is sort of rejecting the Trump stuff, I think it just sort of it's useful to uh, look at it because it gives some insights into the way in which neoliberalism is working and it's been, you know, in many ways just accepted. Also. Yeah, just the alignment with the um, fundamentalist um, Christian movement in the US. I mean, yeah. I think that was part of the earlier form of neoliberalism, but now you see it in its real stark, kind of convenient al al alliances. Yeah. You know, so, he's being supported by, you know, a lot of poor people, but who are part of these kind of fundamentalist Yeah. Movement. So, if you can comment on that, because I think that is a feature of, of why he has so much support. Yeah. So, uh, neoliberalism in its original form was a, a reformation of the economy, and it was also a, a, a reformation of uh, moral uh, authoritarianism in yeah. society. So, you needed both things to go side by side for it to work, and. Um, but again, you know, uh, Trump has sort of captured that arm of it with the uh, uh, evangelical churches and um, uh, and these uh, moral uh, positions that he takes, even though he doesn't live them out yeah. himself, uh, that are, are very, um, you know, I think problematic. So that's, that's all part of this as well. That needs to be unpacked. But, um, you know... Uh, the uh, ratification of the stock market has been, you know, paramount. Um, wealthy elites, the, the science versus the economists, these are all different shapes of what's going on. Yeah. Um, you, know, you know, taking uh, credit and exporting blame. So totally. It's, uh, I guess the question is, what does that mean for us, for Indigenous peoples, or for Māori? You know, we're, we're sort of caught in this kind of particular mode, um, political mode at the moment. Yeah, so I think it's got several uh, implications for us. So one of the things is I think that we uh, need people who've got a more of a Kopapa Māori outlook who are actually involved in our iwi decision-making processes, who are, are able to unpack some of this stuff before it gets a, mm. gets hold of it. Um, uh, you know, uh, a couple of years ago, we did uh, um, uh, some studies of the economic um, positioning of the iwi, and, and uh, you know, I'd have to say that uh, in some places, the the economic uh, development kopapa was just simply replicating the dominant uh, forms of, uh, you know, of uh, economic. Well, I'm sure a lot of iwi investment arms right now have taken big hits economically because of the kinds of investments they might have made. 
where's maybe those who have invested in social, cultural capital and, and real and marae, hapu development, are uh, able to kind of, you know, see something different? Yeah, so that would be one of the big findings is mm. that in the, the cases that we were looking at, that the economic development arm of the iwi was over here and the social and, you know, the the cultural development of the iwi was here with the runanga normally. And they had these bodies. And they weren't speaking to each other, you know, in a, mm. a, and uh, building a, a unified kaupapa that actually, um, you know, traded on, you know, the fundamental element of a kaupapa Māori approach, which is an investment in our traditional values, knowledge and culture in the first instance. So our ability in this dealing with the COVID-19 uh, uh, crisis has, has led very heavily on our traditional values and, and ways of doing things, of, uh, of hearing, of reciprocity, of looking after our elders, of our um, ability to mobilise our networks of the existing uh, relationships and so on. And in ways which have been, um, you know, uh, probably more difficult for the system to grab hold of. But I think actually that Māori in New Zealand has actually been um, a, a, a leader, if you like, for, for New Zealand more generally in, in how to do some of this stuff. And, you know, and I reflect back to uh, the uh, crisis in Katrina. You know, and in that crisis, there were Hanukkah. Yeah, the hurricane in the United States, which killed a lot of people in New Orleans. And a lot of the complaints afterwards in the review of it was that uh, people could not talk to each other. People had lost their social skills to work together. People couldn't help each other out. So you had neighbours who drowned in their houses because they couldn't, uh, people but didn't look after them or come. That's exactly the logic, though, of of the individualism you talked about at the beginning with this kind of this neo kind of liberal philosophy is the selfish individual in the end the logic of that is the undermining of the community or the collective and I mean I think that's a good example and maybe where Māori intuitively operate differently is a default all the time to our collectivity yeah yeah all right, so just in summary then, um, and uh, if I just wind up this uh, a bit, I think um, I think we need to build our, uh, as scholars, need to build our our, um, our research landscape on the politics of truth. Um, so while we're sort of making, you know, uh, making these judgments and speaking critically out that way, I think we... Also, you know, should start with uh, things like we need to understand each of us as a researcher or as a scholar, uh, our, our limitations and our strengths, and to be overt about that. I think that's one of the things that we should put up front. We should say, um, and uh, in our, you know, I encourage my students and when they write their theses to put themselves in their thesis and to write a piece at the front which connects them and their personal life to their work, to their thesis, to give it a more authentic uh, um, a voice, if you like, or locality. Um, and so we need to understand as a group of scholars that no one is pure. Yeah. So that, and by that I mean that we're all having to make compromises somewhere about what we're doing. And as scholars and as academics, you know, I believe uh, working in an institution, uh, doing some of the research that we're doing, uh, where, uh, you know, people are compromising sometimes. Um, you know, I, I hope that they're comprom compromising knowingly, because to me that's a better position than actually just compromising and not knowing what the hell they're doing and uh, going along and, and uh, engaging in sort of colonising uh, outcomes and processes. So we have to be careful all the time, you know, with the commodification of research, so that when we pick up the check, you know, there's a whole lot of strings attached to 
you know, picking up the check with around research. So a lot of things that I think that we need to be reflective about as scholars when we're thinking about our role in the academy, the work that we do in our research, um, and that we need to own up where we're making those uh, compromises and to be able to at least declare them. Well, you often, uh, it's not just a compromise, you're trying to find some space, like a wiggle room space, to do something, you know, that's positive and that contributes positively to to Māori and to our communities and that, but in a really tightly constrained um, context. I mean, uh, there's, it's always compromise, and I think the difficult thing for scholars is kind of understanding how to operate in that environment, you know, in a good way that's not, doesn't do harm to you and to others, you know, yeah. that you can sort of have a sense of pride in the things you do achieve and that, um, you know, you can navigate our world um, with integrity. I mean, I, I think those things become really important when you're in these tricky spaces. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you get cynical, burnt out, um, or you just cave in, mm. you know, those sorts of things. I think to survive, you have to develop particular kinds of tools. And I think Kaupapa Māori gives us a platform that helps us navigate, advocate, but also survive and look after each other. Um, you know, trying to be collegial, I think this is one of the powerful things that Leonie's contributed is that she just defends, advocates, speaks out publicly and, um, you know, makes other Māori feel that someone is speaking for them, speaking for us. So I think it has that hmm. public intellectual role as well. I mean, it's probably, yeah. I want to ask her about that when it's her turn, but I think, you know, you're touching yeah. on these points too. Yeah, no, I would agree, and I certainly agree with uh, Leone's contribution should not be underestimated in yeah. this whole field. Um, and um, so, and uh, yeah, you know, obviously she will um, get get the opportunity to uh, present some of her stuff, uh, some of her stuff soon. But you know, I think this whole business of uh, of us and the way that we work. Uh, you know, I think, first of all, we need to look at ourselves, and that's what I'm saying here about the politics of truth, as, and because we also want to hold, if you like, a moral authority yeah. over the rest of what's going on in, Well, and we the want world. to model what we're talking about, that we're trying to be, act uh, as a collective. Yeah, and, and so as and, part of that, there's, you know, a lot of our communities, as you've noted in your writing somewhere, I might have read it one day, um, is that, uh, <laughs> is that uh, you know, our, our, uh, our communities are very suspicious yeah. of the academics who come into the communities to do research. And, um, and for good reason, you know, there is this anti-intellectualism, anti-academic uh, feeling of yeah. in many of our communities. And if you don't understand that in the first instance, you're going to find it very difficult to enter into a community. So, you know, with all the attendant sensitivities that are required mm. to do that. So, yeah, so I guess that's a good place for us to to uh, leave that. Yeah, okay. And, and um, unless you want to ask me another question. No, it might unleash another coho, but um, there'll be time for that later because... and then a panel. We're going to have a panel later as well. So just thank you for that. I think you've covered some really important sort of um, sociological, political um, dimensions that underpin kaupapa Māori. You know, and I, I would say that there, there's a group of people who are uncomfortable with those, the connection of those ideas to kaupapa Māori. You know, you're mm -hmm. talking about the cultural culturalist approach is that I think what you have argued really clearly is that you need both. You can't just go into 
our cultural revitalization and regeneration efforts without understanding the structural, um, deep structural context in which we live um, and, and have to survive and navigate. So I just want to thank you for that and turn, you, turn us all back to Wetani. <laughs> Okay, kira, kia ora, kia ora, uh, kōrua. Um, ke mihi kawana tēnei ki a kia kōrua. Um, so, uh, on behalf of um, everybody that's going to tune in, um, just a big, huge thank, thank you. Um, and as I said last week, there are a lot of PhD students that are tuning in to listen to these kōrero, and they think they're absolutely fabulous. And why wouldn't they? You know, so um, on behalf of everybody, thank you very, very much for your time. Um, we look forward to our next session, which I think is Friday. Um, but we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll keep everybody posted. So, irungi tērā, te karakia whakamutsunga. Kia tau, kia tā tau katoa, te atawhai a tō tā tau wariki a ihu karaiti, me te aroha o te atua, me te whiwhinga tahitanga ki te wairua tapu, āke, 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 āmene. Ah, kia ora. Kia ora, Thank you.